Christmas around the curl. Here comes Marcus Morris. Smitty called it. Inside the arc for the win! Marcus Morris hits it in the Phoenix Suns. Come back from 24 down in the first half to beat the Minnesota Timberwolves. 91-89. Smitty, they hadn't led since 6-5 I mean, I, before this shot by Marcus Morris. I called it. They were giving the basketball to him. His twin brother, Marquise, was talking to him. If you're the Minnesota Timberwolves, you got to pick up on that as well. Great play, ran, and also give Marcus a lot of credit. This is a two-dribble pull-up with Solomon Jones all over him. Splash! Big-time shot. 91 points is a summer league high for 2013 by the Phoenix Suns. 60 of those come in the second half to complete the comeback and complete the win. And the guy who had the game winner, Marcus Morris, is standing by with Craig Sager. It's been back and forth. Skull on the glass gives it oh. back to Cunningham who throws it down. Okay. Look at the rise from Jared Cunningham. Mars Crittenton and Nick Young leading the way with Javal McGee. Jason Rich, Brandon Wallace also on the floor. Young driving. Step back on Griffin doesn't go. Jordan has the rebound. Out to Griffin. Running in front of the pack. All the way to the rim. And he will finish with the lay-in over Crittenton. 19 points for Griffin. Taylor around the screen from Griffin. Lobs it up, Blake, nice catch, nice finish with a left hand for the number one pick in the draft. James Johnson on the left side, working against the baseline, leaves it for Richard, oh. rolls it down over Cousins. Chris Richard. Samuels, these two trading on each end of the floor and Samuels is getting the best of it. You can't see me, says Tomardo Samuels. Gilstrap makes the catch. Jackson all molded, goes right through. Jenner, corner three all the way, and who gives Cleveland the lead? Ryan Thompson will inbound again. Caspi, Rice, Cousins, and Green on the floor. Rice driving all the way to the rim to his left, kick out. Caspi's got the three, and it's good! Aubrey Caspi ties it in the face of James Johnson at 75. Bolden down low has the reverse layup. Too easy as Downey reached and got caught. Bowden uses the... And Caspi has a bunker from half court. Aubrey Caspi knocks down the triple. And the Maloofs give us a smile and a fist bump. Their second year player pulling the Kings to within eight at the end of the third quarter. Selby is another interesting story that we are going to keep an eye on. Co-MVP of the Summer League last year, along with Damian Lillard. A 24 game last summer, if I remember correctly. Poured it in, talented young player looking for a spot. Barton's three doesn't go, has his own rebound, and reverses underneath with the right hand. Secret squirrel, getting it done. <laughs> Great reverse there in body control. Six early for Will Barton. McCollum runs down the rebound. Blazers in transition. Myers Leonard running the floor gets rewarded. A good look by CJ trusting the hands of Leonard to collect that ball and finish it. Great job of lobbing it over the top of the back line of defense from half court. Snare leaving it for Sacre and the easy two for Robert Sacre. Day number four of NBA Summer League action ready to tip off from the Thomas and Max Center in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, starting with the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Phoenix Suns. Inside the TNM, Chad Andrews is pleased to be joined by Steve Smith and Craig Sager for this one. We start with the T-Wolves who lost to the NBA Development League in their opening game looking for their first win in Summer League action. Steve, it starts with a team effort for Minnesota. You're totally right, Chad. They had a trio of guys that play extremely well. So I wanted to highlight Robbie Hummel. He had 12.6 rebounds, but he made a lot of plays defensively. He did an excellent job moving his feet, taking some charges. Kiki Clark did an excellent job running the team, knocked down some open shots, and Chris Johnson was very active, athletic, grabbing some rebounds. So I like the overall approach from Minnesota and these three guys, even though they lost. 
Phoenix, meanwhile, had a very impressive win over Portland on Saturday, and they did it behind the Super Twins. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Markeith and Marcus Morris, they play a, uh, very well. The reason why is both of them are in tremendous shape, and you can tell they've been working on their game, and I like what they're doing now off the court. They're coming in with some leadership. You can see they both are big, strong, knocking down rebounds, and Marcus did an excellent job of stretching the court. And, fill, and filling it in with probably playing a three, three more than the power four position. And Markeith, we know he's going to bang and rebound. It's good to see those two playing well for Phoenix. Both of the Morris twins will be in the starting lineup for the Suns, coached by Jeff Hornacek, the new head coach in charge in Phoenix. They are joined by the former Texas Longhorn and longtime international veteran P.J. Tucker. Archie Goodwin, the 18-year-old rookie out of Kentucky, and Kendall Marshall, the second-year point guard in the backcourt. Wolves go with Robbie Hummel and Chris Johnson up front. Shabazz Muhammad out of UCLA, the high scoring phenom here as a high school star in Las Vegas in the lineup along with Lorenzo Brown at the point and Michael Thompson. T-Wolves are in black with the T-shirts today while the Suns wearing white shirts and gray shorts and the first rebound of the game to Markeith Morris. Suns in transition with Tucker have the first bucket. Let's get something going, 23 seconds remaining and San Antonio should get an opportunity after that. Schroeder take his time here and they spread the floor. Max gonna run off the screen, Schroeder takes Corey Joseph to the rim and draws the contact. Super quick. First step, great play drawn up by Quinn Snyder. Cleared the side, and you can see Corey Joseph, a good defender, but Schroeder is gone. He has a nice left jab, too, when he's dribbling. In addition Keeping to the, the defense off. In addition to the quickness, something that uh, is not always visible because it's maybe even more apparent during dead ball situations or timeouts. Smitty, you, you're you liking the swagger you're seeing from Schroeder so far, too. Oh, yeah, for sure. He, hey, a lot of these guys are asking for the basketball. He's looking at them saying, hey, I have the basketball. I'll give it to you when I feel like giving to you that. He has a veteran leadership already in that little swagger. Mind you a lot of Rondo. Schroeder's got six, and he pulls the Hawks within one at 40-39 with 10.8 seconds left in the half. San Antonio takes the timeout to draw up a play to end the half here. And what's been fairly high scoring for a summer yes. league game, San Antonio started a little slow, but they've picked it up since that point. What do they go to here in the final 10 seconds? Well, I think for them is you put Corey Joseph and maybe Deshaun Thomas in a little pick and roll, but you probably have Corey try to make this play penetration and draw some defense and kick out. But for them is if, if for Corey Joseph, you got to be careful. Schroeder has some great hands, but so far so good in this game. The first half has been very entertaining. 40 to 39 high scoring we've had some um, games in the third quarter in the 40s and 30s but I like the way both teams are playing uh, everybody's running the floor sharing the basketball and some guys are setting some good picks good basketball so far in this first half when you look at this situation the San Antonio Spurs it's what Tony Parker has mastered as much as he handles the ball and likes to dribble he doesn't over dribble sometimes that's a criticism of Corey Joseph can he learn that and kind of tone it down a little bit and become more of a distributor and less of just a straight attack the rim guy in this type of situation. Well, good thing for Corey, he's still young um, and the Spurs like him. He's in that system, plays some good defense. He comes in and plays spot minutes, but he has a chance to keep learning, especially guarding Tony Parker and that Spurs, like I said, organization will keep developing. You will see right now what he does in his last eight seconds. See if he can get to the basket. Joseph off Good the bounce. Denman in the corner for three. Doesn't go. Great play. Scala has the rebound. That's first basketball. Throw the basketball to the corner, shoot the corner three. You got to try to knock it down. Got a good look to end the half, just didn't fall. Spurs still take a lead to halftime, 40-39 over Atlanta. We come back to Cox Pavilion with Jared Greenberg after this on NBA TV. Game three of day three at the NBA Development League Showcase. Austin, the early lead on Sioux Falls. Chad Andrews, happy to be with you for this one at Quest Arena. Now being joined by the head coach of the home team here at the showcase, the Idaho Stampede, Bob McKinnon. 
in his first year with Idaho. Thanks for taking some time before you get ready to play tonight, Coach. Chad, always a pleasure to be with the best play-by-play -play guy in D-League history. <laughs> oh, in D-League history, wow. What a compliment. I, I thought I was maybe just the best one on this game since I'm <laughs> the only one at, at this point. But uh, I always appreciate it, Bob. As we uh, keep an eye on Sioux Falls and Austin here, we